Hey everyone, Mike here. October is a big month for Starlink. It was October last year that SpaceX launched the Starlink Better Than Nothing Beta. This October, Starlink is leaving Beta and rolling out nationally in the US. So let's take a look at what the national rollout means and take a look at the big question, when is everyone going to get their Starlink? All the details coming up. So I did a short video a little while ago talking about what coming out of beta might mean for Starlink. This tweet from Elon Musk suggests that at the same time they move from beta to generally available, they will also be opening up service to the entire continental US, including the southern states. I have a lot of viewers from Florida, Louisiana, Texas who are eagerly awaiting coverage. We know the service can work in the south, if you remember way, way back, Boca Chica was actually one of the earliest sightings of the Starlink Dishy user terminal. But the closer you get to the equator, the satellite coverage gets more sparse. So at the time, service in Boca Chica would have been pretty choppy. Over the past year, with continued launches and positioning in orbit, SpaceX has pretty good coverage over most of the world within 53 degrees of latitude. I frequently say this about SpaceX, but the rate of progress has been astounding. To go from early beta to GA of a service like Starlink in only a year is pretty amazing. Now, opening up coverage nationwide does not mean everyone can get access. There are still two big limiting constraints. The first big constraint limiting who can get Starlink is network capacity. Each satellite in the Starlink constellation can only handle so much bandwidth kind of going through it. Starlink is being deployed in multiple shells around the Earth. Shell 1 is what's providing service today. Its coverage is like a big belt around the planet, covering everywhere between 53 degrees north and 53 degrees south, everywhere in between. At the equator, where the planet is thickest, coverage is stretched out so not as many satellites overhead at any given time. Near the top and bottom of that belt where the Earth curves in, there are more satellites in view. That's why the user terminals point themselves north if you're in the northern hemisphere and south if you're in the southern hemisphere. They're aiming to that denser area of more coverage. Starlink also has approval for more orbital shells. Shell 2 is actually almost exactly the same as Shell 1, just a slightly steeper inclination and 10 kilometers closer. It's to further fill in that belt so that there are more satellites available to handle more traffic from more users. Shell 3, the one they've just started deploying from Vandenberg, is going to fill in the polar regions. Instead of orbits inclined at 52 degrees like Shell 1 and 2, they're inclined at 70 degrees, so they fill in coverage in the far north and south. Those satellites also spend a lot of their orbit over that middle belt, so they will also help with coverage over the rest of the planet, but the more satellites over an area, the more users they can handle in that area. That's why SpaceX talks a lot about targeting low to medium population density. In highly urban areas, there would just be too many users for the current satellites to handle. Shells 4 and 5 will be even steeper, around 97 degrees, which is technically a retrograde orbit. It's spinning against the natural spin of the Earth, but close enough that you can think of them as going directly over the poles to really fill in that area. So right after Musk tweeted about the nationwide rollout, he also posted this tweet highlighting that the rollout can still only handle low to medium population density and to sign up early to reserve your, your space in the pre-order queue. And this leads into the second big constraint, the Dishy user terminal. Before I get to that, if you enjoy my updates, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to get notified as soon as updates come out. So you can't get Starlink until you get a user terminal. The user terminals take time to produce and they take parts. Unfortunately, we're living through probably the biggest supply chain disruption, certainly in my lifetime, which slows everything down. SpaceX is doing surprisingly well, considering, and I think that's because they have a secret weapon. 
And the secret weapon SpaceX is using to get the parts they need is all of you. When you pay your $99 pre-order, that's like an interest-free loan to SpaceX. Based on the last official numbers, that loan adds up to around $60 million. With that money, SpaceX can make massive purchases from suppliers to lock in their capacity. Buying in bulk gets better per unit prices and ensures that the parts they need go into Starlink and not to other companies. I know a lot of people have been critical of the down payments, but I like to think of it as not just saving your own place in line, but also giving SpaceX the bargaining power they need to make the whole line move faster. There's one more big change I'm hoping for when Starlink goes GA. Just before I get to that, if you're in the southern states and already have Starlink, I'd love to know when you got it. Let me know down in the comments. If you're still waiting, let me know when you made your pre-order. Okay, so the other big change I'm hoping for is more mobility support. The ability to move your Starlink user terminal to other locations and still get service. Today you can do this using the online Starlink portal to change your service address. But every time you do that, there's no guarantee you can move it back. That capacity may be given to someone else waiting for service. What I would love is some way to let SpaceX know how long you plan to be away. So if I was going away for a week and I wanted to bring Starlink on that trip, I could enter that into the request. Now Starlink knows that I only need coverage for a week at my destination. So if somebody there orders coverage, they can still give it to them since you know it'll take at least a week to ship the new dish anyway. Back at my home location, SpaceX can keep my spot for me. If somebody else is traveling there, SpaceX can give them my spot for a week, but I know it's available when I come back. I know this is extremely low on their priorities and I'm not really expecting this. And because of the coverage constraints I already discussed, this probably won't happen. But you never know. It is October and SpaceX likes to make big Starlink changes in October, so we'll see. So I am expecting some big news this month, so stay tuned for more updates. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.